Hi everyone and welcome to Jane Talks Real. It's nostalgia time once again and I'm going to be talking about Edward and Friends. Edward and Friends was a TV show based on Lego's Fabuland series of toys, which I own because of course I do. The show consisted of five minute episodes and you've probably guessed it by now, I had an Edward and Friends VHS. I had volume one, but I've never seen volume two, so I'll be talking about the first nine episodes only. Edward was an elephant, and his friends were Bonnie the Bunny and Max the Mouse. Also of note were Joe Crow, Lionel Lion, who was the mayor, Hannah Hippopotamus, and Clive Crocodile, who was whiny and annoying. I haven't seen Edward and Friends since I was a small child, but I watched it so many times that I remember it so vividly. The first episode saw Edward get the hiccups after witnessing Joe Crow doing Daredevil stunts. It upset his breakfast with Max and Bonnie, so he goes for a walk. Hannah asks him to help plant potatoes, although I'm not sure that's how potatoes work. But anyway, Edward hiccups a potato through Hannah's window and breaks her vase. Hannah suggests holding his breath while Bonnie and Max try to scare him, but both ideas fail. Joe takes Edward up in his plane to try and scare him, but real engine trouble finally cures him of his hiccups. Edward, Bonnie and Max receive an invitation through the post to Lionel's fancy dress party. Whoever has the most unusual costume will win a prize. Max immediately decides he's going as a car and races around the house, but Bonnie and Edward struggle to decide. Bonnie first thinks of going as a bunny, until Edward tells her, uh, you are a bunny. Plot twist. Instead, she decides she's going dressed as Edward, and Edward teaches her to walk and dance like an elephant. Edward decides he's going to the party as nothing, which turns out to be a tree. Lionel loves it, and after they all have cake, he declares Edward to be the winner. Boris Bulldog the postman has trouble being on his feet all day delivering the post. Freddy Fox, the local shopkeeper, suggests he get a scooter. Lionel, who pops up out of nowhere, thinks it's a marvellous idea and decides that everyone in town should chip in to buy it for him. It arrives by boat and everyone is excited. But when Boris tries it out, he loses control of it and tears up Lionel's lawn, takes Billy Bear for a ride and upsets Hannah's washing. When he does get used to how it works, he delivers the mail a lot faster than usual and is left with too much spare time on his hands. Everyone in town decides to write letters to each other to keep Boris and his scooter busy. After days of bad weather and being stuck indoors, Edward, Bonnie and Max are cranky and start to argue. Hannah intervenes and helps them to make their own kites. Edward paints the moon on his, Max paints a sun and Bonnie paints an eagle. They run into Clive, who really wants to join in, but he hasn't got a kite. Hannah kindly lends him her dragon kite. The kite flying goes well until a gust of wind tangles them all together. Hannah tries to get them entangled, but Clive, being the impatient douche nozzle that he is, pulls too hard and snaps all the strings. Everyone is annoyed with Clive, and Hannah tells them that it's okay, they can make some more tomorrow. But when they make it home, Edward, Bonnie and Max's kites have all landed at the house. Clive gloats that he's the winner because his kite stayed up the longest, but it soon comes crashing down and twats him on the head. Bertie Bulldog is the policeman of Fabuland, but he's bored because nothing ever happens. Lionel is driving too slowly to give him a speeding ticket, and when he asks Freddy if someone has tried to break in, Freddy tells him that there's no crime here and therefore he doesn't even bother to lock up at night. He gets bored listening to Wilfred's stories and goes for a walk by the beach where he discovers some unusual footprints. He immediately concludes that they are monster tracks and follows them to Clive's house with Edward, Max and Bonnie in tow. Clive is missing, so the only sensible conclusion is that he's been eaten by the monster. But Bertie notices the tracks lead back to the sea and follows them. They spot the monster emerging from the sea and follow it back to Clive's house where they discover that the monster is really Clive, of course. He's been diving for the treasure Wilfred's been talking about in his stories and the footprints were made by Clive's flippers. Wilfred is cleaning out his junk and he finds his old camera. Edward offers to take some photos of Fabuland for him and Wilfred teaches him how to use it. Edward takes pictures of Hannah and her flowers, Max standing on his head, Lionel in his car and guests at Catherine's Cat's Cafe. He returns to Wilfred and takes a picture of him but because he can't get him in frame he gets him to back up almost into the sea. Wilfred looks at the photos Edward took but discovers a strange shadow in each and every one. He realises that it's Edward's trunk, so Bonnie ties a balloon to it so it won't get in the frame again. Lionel invites Edward, Bonnie, Max and Hannah to have tea with him in the town hall. 
Lionel tells him about the band he used to be a part of in Fabuland, playing the trumpet, with Joe on saxophone, Wilfred on drums, and Boris on accordion. Edward and co. climb the clock tower to get the instruments. Max takes the drum, Edward the trumpet, Bonnie the accordion, and they give the saxophone to Clive, who was surprisingly good at it. Edward, on the other hand, is so terrible at playing the trumpet that Catherine drops her plates, Wilfred falls out of his rocking chair, and Lionel almost crashes his car. Edward is told to go play out in the countryside where no one can hear him, while the rest of the band's rehearsals go really well. Hannah decides it's a good idea to wake Lionel up in the morning for his birthday with a performance from the band. But when Edward gets there, he tells them he's ditched his trumpet and can instead play music through his trunk. Lionel is so pleased that he joins the band too, using the discarded trumpet. Edward is eating a lot of cake, and when he falls asleep instead of playing football with Bonnie and Max, they decide that he is too fat and they need to do something about it. The following day, Hannah shows Edward the Speak Your Weight machine. He steps onto the scales, and Max inside the machine tells him that he's too heavy. Edward starts running and refuses both a lift from Lionel and free cakes from Catherine. He steps back onto the scale and Max declares he's fit, not fat. The machine breaks, but Edward sees the funny side and they all run home to play football. Edward, Max, Bonnie and Clive are taking a trip on Wilfred's boat when he laments the loss of his old telescope. Clive overhears Wilfred telling Max about a treasure chest he found on the island. Unfortunately, the chest was empty, but Wilfred reckons there must be more treasure buried where he found it, which was in the shadow of the tallest tree. Or maybe it was the shortest. He can't remember. They have a picnic on the island and fall asleep. As the sun sets, Edward and Bonnie wake up to find both Max and Clive missing, so they go looking for them. They hear Max calling for help and find him in a hole in the shadow of the tallest tree. But he's found something. They pull Max out and discover that the treasure is Wilfred's missing telescope. They then hear Clive calling for help, and he's gotten himself stuck in a hole in the shadow of the shortest tree. Wilfred realises that he's a terrible guardian, but tells the kids that the real treasure is the moon. Yay? So there you have it. That was Edward and Friends. Did you watch this one as a kid? And what episode do you remember the most? Did you also watch Volume 2 when you were younger? Let me know in the comments or come say hi on Twitter. If you enjoy this video, then please like, share and subscribe. Join me next time where I'll be talking about a point and click adventure game about a missing princess. I'll speak to you soon and thanks for watching.